I decided to switch my client from CND Shellac to Dazzle Dry. And for this manicure, I used one of my favorite Dazzle Dry reds called Holly Berry. So why did she switch? Well, because the surface damage to her nails is unfortunately getting worse. And that's despite removing the gel polish very, very gently. I have my theory why this is happening, and I will explain that later in this video. And you'll see me using the new OPI repair mode and nail adhesive to fix a cracked nail. So my client came to me after over four weeks, I think it was four and a half weeks of wearing this product. So I started the manicure with trying to help the badly broken nail. So I first applied the OPI repair mode and you can see how the product seeped into the nail layers and then it evaporated, it's alcohol based. And taking a quick look, so when I first looked at her nails, they actually didn't look too bad, except for the one that was really badly broken. So after I removed the product, the nails did look bad. And I also wanted to add that the client told me that she did a lot of cleaning, and I'll explain why cleaning can be damaging to the nails later and how that happens. So I started the removal with a gentle buff with a buffer block just to remove the shine. And I know CND does not recommend buffing, but they also do recommend redoing the shellac every two weeks, and they recommend using jojoba at least daily and that was not happening. So this was four weeks and no jojoba oil. I noticed that clients usually wear the manicure until it breaks, until the nails look really bad. And unfortunately then it's too late. So I do explain every time that it's better to stick to bi-weekly appointments to redo the manicure before the nails are damaged. But I guess, you know, life happens and it is what it is. So the reason why I removed the shine is to make the coating a bit more porous so it soaks off better. And I also use the new no wipe top coat, which I find it does not soak off as easily as the original or the Express 5, but it has a very, very nice shine and a very thin look. I like using it. Also as the coating, so in this case, obviously shellac ages, it becomes more brittle and it's just more difficult to remove it. It is very important to place the cotton soaked with the remover and the remover usually it's acetone and secure it properly and wrap it tightly so the acetone does not evaporate. So I put just a drop of adhesive, I let the adhesive flow into the lifted area, and then I put some pressure on the nail using an orange wood stick. So make sure that if you do this, don't use your other nail or even worse, a finger, because you're gonna glue yourself to that broken nail.
In case you're wondering if I used CND remover called Awfully Fast, I did not use it. I used pure acetone and I usually use pure acetone and I used it in this case specifically because I wanted to incorporate the RPI repair mode and I knew that I'm going to have to use the adhesive on some of the nails probably. So pure acetone evaporates very clean and it does not leave behind anything, any water or any oil. And seeing the awfully fast is simply acetone with an addition of some macadamia oil and fragrance and it has some vitamin E as a preservative. So despite the marketing, personally, I do not think it's more gentle. Acetone-based removers, when they have other ingredients, the acetone evaporates faster. It evaporates right away and then it leaves behind the oil and the water which it makes the nails look better and I actually talked to a cosmetic chemist about it and that's what they said as well so basically oil hides a lot of surface damage so I know oil is beneficial long term for sure and it might be actually beneficial addition to the acetone but it it does not make the remover more gentle so some removers also have, like I mentioned, water, but they also have glycerin in them. So like I said, after the acetone evaporates, which happens very fast, on the nail surface, there is some water and oil, so the nail looks better. Is it less drying? Well, it depends. So let's think about this scenario. If you just remove something with pure acetone, yes, the skin and the nail will be dry if you don't put anything on your skin and on your nail. But if you remove the product with pure acetone and then you wash your hands with water and then you apply some cream or oil, the skin and the nails won't be dry. And also this way, the nails are not going to be more dry than using a remover that has inside water and some oil. You know what I mean? Anyway, in this case, I just wanted to make sure that I have squeaky clean nails to see what was going on with the nails. Now, this is something interesting. Once all the product was removed, you could see that the majority of the damage is in the stress area. So in the middle of the nail, the area that bends when you put pressure on the nail. So this is why I suspect that the product holding onto the nail as the nail is bending somehow pulls the layers of the nail apart. So this damage is not happening during removal. This damage is happening during wear and the removal with pure acetone makes it simply more visible because pure acetone does not leave any water or any oil behind to hide the damage. And why would the cleaning damage the nails more? Because when you are cleaning a lot, usually that means water exposure and hitting the nails, obviously, because you're working with your hands, you're bending your nails. So when nails absorb a lot of water, they are like little sponges, they are way more prone to damage. It's just like hair. When your hair is wet, hairdressers always tell you to be very, very gentle when your hair is wet. The hair is much more prone to damage 
when it's wet. It's the same thing with the nails. And also when the nails absorb a lot of water, the nails swell and they expand. Again, just like a dry sponge. So the coating that's covering them, that is bonded to them, does not expand, which that creates a tension between the two surfaces when you think about it. So you have one smaller surface, that would be the gel, and now you have a bigger surface, that's the natural nail. The nail is swelling with water, but it's stuck to the gel polish. So the gel polish is starting to pull on the nail layers, on the top layers, eventually pulling the layers off the nail, loosening them, right? And this is when you get the flaking, the loose nail layers, the loose cells. So this is not the acetone causing the flaking. The acetone is just makes it more visible. And I can guarantee you that if you dip a healthy nail in acetone for 10 minutes every four weeks, you will not have this type of flaking happening. So my point is, let's not blame the acetone. I made sure to shorten the nails as much as possible to create less pressure on the damaged area. So when your nails are damaged, always shorten them every week, possibly. So OPM repair mode, it's supposed to repair the keratin bonds, but of course it's, it's supposed to be used twice a day for the first six days or something. So of course I can't do that. I can only use it once. And I was hoping that the layers would hold, but as you can see, they still looked torn up. So I decided to add some adhesive to bond the broken nail layers or the, the nail layers that looked pulled apart. So clean breaks usually don't hold very well, but this type of flake of a break, I call it a flake, usually does hold, especially if you are very gentle with your nails. And it's very important to remember that adhesive sticks well to the nail, but it doesn't stick very well to itself. So when you apply some adhesive to a broken nail and it breaks again, adding more adhesive doesn't help because adhesive does not stick to itself. And for this purpose, I like to use a thin adhesive, something that easily seeps into the cracks.
before I remove the cuticle from the nail plate, I nudge back the skin fold, which is a living skin, by the way. This actually exposes the cuticle a bit so I can remove it with electric file. So if you are new to my channel, I will explain it very quickly. So what I do in a salon is a bit different from what you need or an average person that does their nails. So if you care for your nails and if you do dental manicures like I teach every week, there is absolutely no need for electric file. I know it looks cool and I know it looks like it's very effective, but honestly, you can do a lot of damage with it. And if you're not trained specifically with electric file, I do not recommend using it because you can seriously damage your nails. A lot of nail technicians actually, unfortunately, damage the nails with electric file too. And then I remove the cuticle from the nail plate with Erica medium tapered barrel on a low speed. And that bit is made to be used on a natural nail. And I use the electric file on low speed, 7,000 RPM approximately with a very, very light touch. I don't put pressure and I don't stay on the nail. I do these little taps, just grabbing the cuticle and I keep moving. Onto the polishing. So Dazzle Dry is a pretty unique product. And I actually made a video called the pros and cons of Dazzle Dry. So I'm not gonna repeat it here. It's a probably a 15 minute uh, long video if you are interested in the brand. And I will include this video at the end of this video and also in the description box. And I will have the link in my pinned comment as well. So I decided to do one coat of base coat. Dazzle Dry usually recommends two, but I decided to do one. And why? Because I don't actually want the coating to bond to the nail at any cost, creating more damage. I actually wanted to create a gentle bond. And I'm hoping to see this client in a week or 10 days to see how the nails are doing. And I actually offered her a complimentary manicure to make sure that she comes because I wanted to show you guys how the nails lasted. And when the nails are growing out, the damage, I really recommend weekly manicure. So I really wanted to make sure that she comes in uh, within a week or like 10 days. 
normally if you're doing your own nails i do recommend to get the least amount of surface damage possible i recommend taking the polish off after six days doing a warm jojoba soak and then taking a day off from polish Holly Berry looks pretty pink on the first coat and when I start polishing the nails almost all the clients are like oh my god it's pink I, I, I don't want pink <laughs> but on the second coat it changes completely and then it looks really red it's actually almost a little bit on orangey side but it's a pretty true bright red and the application is absolutely flawless Dazzle Dry has very very good reds so I make sure to dry the polish in between the coats and most of the times when I'm finished painting the last nail, the first nail is already dry. So it looks matte. So you can tell that it's dry. Same for the top coat. I let the polish dry completely and then I apply the top coat. And here I just cleaned up the edges of the nail polish with an acrylic brush. And this is like a number six, I would say. Never used for acrylic, obviously. Dipped in acetone, dabbed off. That way the acetone does not flood the nail polish. And once the brush picks up the nail polish, I wipe it off and go back to pick up more acetone and so on.
when the top coat is applied, I set a timer for five minutes and then I apply the oil and cream once the nails are dry. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.